Hello, everybody. Welcome to Broadway.com's Live at Five. It is Monday, December 2nd, and I am Ryan Lee Gilbert. Happy birthday, Ryan Lee Gilbert. <gasps> Thank you Yay! very much, Beth Stevens. And I'm Beth Stevens. <laughs> and I, we are joined here in the studio, as always, by the magnificent <gasps> Caitlin Moynihan. Hello. There she is. There she is. We're back, baby. Yes, looking very cozy today. I'm it's like, snowing. It's snowing. It is. It's so, yes, it is snowing today, and lucky enough for us, the marvelous Caitlin Houlihan came over from the Brooks Atkinson Theater where she is starring as Dawn in Waitress and she's going to sit with us and chat for just a little bit. But first, let's talk about today's top five. This story is so crazy and unexpected that I don't really know how to intro it. So, Beth, here you go. <laughs> Let me break it down. Wow. Johnny Depp mm -hmm. is going to produce a musical in which Michael Jackson's sequined left-handed glove, glove is going to be the singing narrator. Sure. This is not a parody. Yes. Let me go on. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to talk. It's called <clears throat> For the Love of a Glove. I feel like I'm doing a this Saturday Night Live. This doesn't feel real. An unauthorized musical fable about the life of Michael Jackson as told by his glove. That's two gloves, one title. Got it. Got it. It's written by <laughs> Julian Nitzberg, and it will premiere at the Carl Sagan and Androyan Theater in Los Angeles on January 25th. Okay. Okay. So... I keep There's another like, Michael Jackson musical which will open <laughs> on Broadway this summer called MJ. Yeah. At the Neil Simon Theater. This is not that. No. That's These gonna be different. Nowhere. That's gonna have yeah. Tony Nominee yeah, from Sykes and right. some other yes. stuff. This yeah, is yeah. a okay. Now I did some research about the glove, Ryan, because I thought you would want to know. Well, I keep picturing the hamburger helper glove. As that's a just, different lefty. You know, like, that's I a different that's a different it. lefty. Okay. This glove actually mm -hmm. Um, was sold at auction I thought in 2009 so. I, okay. for $420,000. Somebody has this glove oh, wow. um, after taxes and fees. I want to be oh. sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So this is the life story as told from the point of view of the sequined glove. All the way through its auctioning off? Maybe. No, I think just <laughs> while MJ was alive. Just while MJ. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Got it. Look. Okay. I don't know that much about it. I, I, I don't know think, there was just one glove. I don't think Johnny Depp does either. But Johnny Depp is somehow <laughs> behind it and... <laughs> all right. All, all and all there right. it is. There you go. There Great. <laughs> yes, and we finally found out who is the final person who's going to help bring a prom to life. Yes, yeah, so after... Uh, so obviously the prom is going to Netflix in fall of 2020 and, you know, many of the stars that have joined it, but then there was a nationwide casting search for who would be playing Emma in the prom, and it is going to be Jo Ellen Pellman. She's an up-and-coming star. She will be taking on the lead role of Emma. You may have seen her on screen in such shows as The Deuce, The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, in a show called Alternatino. Alternatino? I don't think I've heard of that. Mm -hmm. um, but she is from, uh, she studied at the University of Michigan, where she starred on stage in Me and My Girl, The Drowsy Chaperone, and Grand Concourse. The Michigan Mafia strikes the again. The Michigan <laughs> Mafia does. Go they blue. strike Go again. Blue. Musical theater, you know. Absolutely. Um, and of course, the prom film that will be on Netflix stars so many huge stars, including Meryl Streep, James Corden, Andrew Rannells, Nicole Kidman, Ariana DeBose, Aquafina, Keegan Michael Key, and Carrie Washington. And as I mentioned earlier, it will be on Netflix in the fall of 2020, and we around here are very, very excited because we love the prom. And we're big, still listening to the original still listening Broadway to cast and recording. congratulations to Joe Ellen Pellman. That is a fantastic role mm -hmm. that you're inheriting. Mm -hmm. All rise for Rice Iffins. It's Reese Evans, oh, wow. the well oh, captor. Yes, yes, that was a setup. Yeah. That was I, just I in like case how you were confused. confused. <laughs> and I don't blame you because it's a hard name to say, Reese Evans, who... I first noticed in Notting Hill, he played Spike. Right. Hugh oh, Grant's of roommate. Yes. Do you know what I mean? With the paparazzi. He's and a he's kook? wearing the little. He's kooky. Yeah, yeah, he is. Okay, a kook. he's a Welsh yeah. actor. He's going to play Atticus Finch in the West End, a production so, so. of To Kill a Mockingbird. This is the Broadway production directed by Bart mm -hmm. Litchier with the entire creative team on board. Can you That's believe really it? Cool. He's no. a stage actor as well. He's done many, many uh, turns Eggs of the King, A Christmas Carol, Accidental Death of an Anarchist, and King Lear. And of course, he was oh, also wow. in Enduring Love and The Amazing. Spider-Man. So you've seen him on screen. You Absolutely. may have seen him on stage. You probably don't know how to pronounce oh, his name, but the, I looked it he up. He was like the lizard character That's in correct. The Amazing Spider-Man. Okay, there you go. There right. you go. Yeah. So this now production will begin previews on May 21st and open on June 11th at the Gielgud Theater in the West End. Mm. And this Tony nominee is heading back to Skid Row. 
Yes, uh, speaking of To Kill a Mockingbird, Gideon Glick, who earned his very first Tony nomination for playing Dill in on the Broadway production, he has signed on to succeed Jonathan Groff in Off-Broadway's Little Shop of Horrors at the West Side Theater. So Jonathan Groff will be taking his will be making his final bow in the production on January January 19th. He's got to go I promote think Frozen he's too, got right? to, Well, he's got to do some more promoting of Frozen 2, but he also has to think film more in Mindhunter oh, you bet. on Netflix as well. So Gideon Glick stepped in for Jonathan Groff for two weeks in Little Shop of Horrors while Groff was promoting Frozen 2. Um, and then he will begin his next time in the show on January 21st, and he will play through a new extension date Ooh. of Little Shop through March 8th of Ooh. 2020. Uh, you may have seen Gideon Glick in Spring Awakening, opposite Groff, of course, Significant Other, or Spider-Man Turn Off the Dark, which he was in for just a little bit um, before they made some big changes. You may have seen him in Ocean's 8. He's fantastic in oh, Ocean's yes. 8 as well. So congrats to Gideon Glick. I saw him in the show. He's fantastic. This is great. Yes. And we got some more casting for this West End transfer. So I'm all about London today. I'm not going to do my a British London. accent. I'm not going to do it for you. But Nicola Roberts has joined the cast of City of Angels. Now, this is the Don Mar production from 2014, which I actually I saw. Oh, that's and right. this was the part that Samantha Barks played at the Don Mar. But now oh. it's moving to the West End, and she will play Avril Mallory. You know, they have these two roles. Mm -hmm. um, and it will be at the Garrick Theater starting on March 5th, and she is joining Vanessa Williams, mm -hmm. Rosalie Craig, and her husband, Hadley Frazier, who did it at the Don Mar, right. and Rebecca Treherne. What else can I tell you? This is her... Uh, stage debut. So uh, Nicola Roberts is best known as a member of the former or a former member of the music group Girls Aloud. Oh, okay. okay I know so this somebody group. Knows All right. I yes. don't know anything. Yes. But there okay. you All right. go. Go see it. It's coming up in March. Fantastic. There are also some great things that you can check out on the site right now. There is a new episode of Show People that features Alex Timbers, represented right now on Broadway with Beetlejuice and Moulin Rouge, of course. And a consultant on American Utopia. And, um, yeah, exactly. Um, Becca Peterson of the Mean Girls Ensemble. There's a new Gotta Dance with her. Uh, there is also a December closing time, your, you know, your last opportunity to go see some things around town. You also have our Save the Date picks, the things that we're endorsing for the month of December. <laughs> uh, there is a new Q&A, a London Q&A, with and Juliet star Miriam Teak Lee. Right, she was in Hamilton in the West End, and now yes. she's the star of An Ampersand Juliet. Yes. yes. There go. Um, and there are some new Tug Rice illustrations about the must-do events of the week, December 2nd through the 8th. You can check out all of that as well. But don't go anywhere just yet. Beth, thank you so much for doing Thank the news you. with me on my Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Thank you so much. Caitlin Moynihan, would you tell us about our other Caitlin guest today? Gladly. Yes, we got Caitlin Houlihan here with us in the studio today. She is back at the diner, at, back at the diner for her last shift in Waitress before it closes up shop on January 5th. She's currently playing Dawn, and this is her third time playing it, so... She knows it. We love it. Um, and this actually, when the first time she went into Waitress in 2016, that marked her Broadway debut. She's been a little busy since then. She was in Off-Broadway's Girl from the North Country, and she will reprise her role when it comes to Broadway this season. She's a busy lady. Make sure you follow her on social media at Kate Hula. Leave all of your questions in the comments below. And please welcome Caitlin and Ryan. Hello, Caitlin. Hello, Ryan. This is very exciting for me. Um, so as Beth mentioned, it is my birthday. I'm also a huge waitress stan. I, I believe you complete. I have now interviewed yes. every character no from way. Waitress. I hadn't interviewed a Dawn on Aww. Live at Five yet. And so you complete. Oh, I, my gosh. I hope I go into It's your birthday present. Somewhere. So exactly. I'm just kidding. So <laughs> no, you are you are an absolutely fantastic Don. I've had the pleasure Thank of you. seeing you in this role. You're so wonderful. Um, what do you love most about this character, this show, this music? Um, yeah, like what, what, where does waitress oh, gosh. sit in your heart? So I guess the first time uh, that I ever saw waitress, I think it goes back even before that. And I was on tour with Bridges of Madison County. Oh, absolutely. And yes. um, the soundtrack came out. Sarah's version came out. What's inside? Yes. And then the Broadway cast album came out, and I was obsessed with it. And I was singing it in the shower, and I was just like, I love this music. So uh, one time on a layover, I went to see it in previews, and I completely fell in love with it. Um, when I saw the Kamiko playing Dawn, I, she was so Kimiko fantastic. Kamiko Glenn, yeah. Glenn. She's so fantastic. I completely fell in love with the role. It was like 
seeing myself in something and really? I had never seen a show that so completely had a character that I felt close to yeah. and I thought to myself like this is it I want to do this <laughs> and then I was like it's never going to happen and then like six months later it happened so it's wow. extremely special to yeah. me being one of my favorite shows uh before going into it and then um now having been in it on and off for three years it's pretty, to be pretty part special of the closing cast, yes of being a part yes. of the closing cast is pretty special yeah what was yeah. It, if you're willing to share what was it about the character of dawn that um that sort of spoke to you that mm. that you sort of recognized in her well there were a lot of things actually i think the first thing that really stood out to me was that there was this character actress who had a song where she was belting and mixing mm. in, and uh Previous to then, I had never seen a, a character actress with such a wonderful range in a song. Yeah, no, and so no. that was huge. I was like, oh my gosh, that's that's changing Broadway, you know, for character <laughs> right, actresses. Right. Um, so it was that, but it was also someone who was so anxious. And I think, um, you know, a lot of young people struggle with anxiety and and especially with everything that's happening in the world today um we see so much of the bad things and i think it mm. causes a lot of people a lot of anxiety and it's like down to like the small things of like what if i go on a date and the guy doesn't like me sure, i think that's like right. extremely relatable and so i uh i wanted to play a role where i could like kind of be that person yeah. because that was something that I struggled with was just anxiety, kind of blanket anxiety. Right. And no, so representation. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I know other people from the guests that I've spoken with, they've um, going on with this, they've said that their interactions at like the stage door mm -hmm. have there have been some times where the, either people have, you know, written messages mm -hmm. that really share. Have you had experiences with people at, outside the stage door as well? Just touching that are touched by this show oh absolutely i think uh the most recent one there was a young girl and she had been sitting in the front row and i noticed her because she was really young and she had been crying through the entire show mm -hmm. and i saw her at the stage door and she was just shaking and she was trying to express how much she loved the show and how much it she just loved it so much. It was her first time seeing it, and she just couldn't stop crying. And I was like, don't worry. Like, the <laughs> first time I saw the show, I couldn't stop crying either, right, you right. know? Yeah. And so we see, you know, a lot of uh, young people who are so affected by it. But it, on the same, or on the other end, we see a lot of middle-aged folk or older folks who you don't think would be so affected by the show, yeah. but are just like, this was the best show I've ever seen, and I loved it, and yeah. Certainly, and you have so many wonderful people. Of course, you have Catherine McVie, who's back. Yes. Um, she's done it here on Broadway before, and mm -hmm. then she opened it in London, and now she's back, but then you also have the original Dr. Pometer, and you yes. have the original Ogie with Christopher mm -hmm. Fitzgerald and Drew Gayling back in the show. Um, how is the, the rest of the cast sort of feeling to be a part of the... Um, the closing chapter mm. of, of Waitress. Is there is there a mood? I think uh, it depends on the day. I know, right. you know, you're always uh, nervous at the end of a show, kind of what's going to happen afterwards. And, um, you know, wa Waitress has been kind of a staple on yeah. Broadway for the past almost four years. And so for it not to be there, I think it's going to be a little bit weird. Um, but I think for the most part, people are feeling just like the theater is full of love, especially having so many of these OGs and people who have done the show before coming back. It just feels like a family. It's always felt like a family, but to have it be people that I, I know I started with, right. I can speak for myself in saying that it's been just a really easy place to go to kind of relax and do this show together that has so much heart and we're able to just do that all together and know that it's coming to an end, but we love it and we're gonna just do it together. Oh, that's yeah. super cool. That's fantastic. Yeah. Um. And also, what do you remember? I remember like, uh, we did I think a fresh face with you when yes. you made your Broadway debut yes. in Waitress. Mm -hmm. What do you remember about your the night you made your Broadway debut? What's what's a significant memory or emotion that stands out from you for that night? Oh gosh. Um. I was really nervous because my family was there. Oh. And honestly, if they wouldn't have been there, I don't think I would have been as right, nervous. No. High um, pressure guests. Really that, high yeah. pressure. You know, <laughs> right, I wanted right. to make everyone proud. Um, I think uh, this isn't really like a mood or an emotion, but uh, at the end of When He Sees Me, I was singing the final note and I was just like so nervous and I didn't have enough breath. So I was like, 
you know what? If like I told myself in the rehearsal before, if this happens, I'm just gonna <laughs> like take a funny breath in the middle and finish the note. Right. And I did, and it was not funny. And I was like, I'm never doing that again. <laughs> Tried, but I so, yeah yes. could couldn't hold out that last note. <laughs> wow, well, you know that's that's amazing. That's yeah, amazing. And it you, happens. You know? Exactly. Absolutely. <laughs> and you are um, I you mentioned you're a big fan of Sarah Bareilles. I believe you're mm-hmm. also doing Waitress Sings Sarah Bareilles yes. Volume Two on yes. December 18th. Round two. Round two mm-hmm. at the Green Room 42. Mm-hmm. Um, without giving you know I want things to be a surprise. Of but what will um, what attachment do you have the song to the song you will be singing? Is it? So I'm going to be doing a little bit of a group number with some okay. friends, Molly Great. Job and Henry Godfrey, and um, we chose a song uh, from her new album. Oh, um, okay. Something that we've been really enjoying lately, and um, a, a bunch of the girls from the show, Waitress and I, w- went down to D.C. on our day off when we saw her concert oh, in D.C., and so seeing her perform that there... Yeah. Um, did that, was, was that really inspiring. Of... <laughs> yeah, it was really inspiring. We were like, okay, we're going to do something like this. So I won't give it away, but yeah. That's so cool. Yeah, so. Uh, and as Caitlin mentioned in your introduction, um, so you will be wrapping up things with Waitress on mm-hmm. January 5th. And then beginning in March, mm-hmm. right, previews for yes. Girl from North Country begin. Um, you did this at the Public off Broadway. Mm-hmm. Um, what can you tell us about, why do you love this show? Why are you excited uh, to, one, be a part of it, and for two, for Broadway audience? to be able to experience it that weren't able to see it before. Hmm. Well, something that I really love about the show, uh, it's its completely different from Waitress. Like, it, it, completely right. different. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so it takes place in the Great Depression, um, and it's all Bob Dylan music. Uh, Bob Dylan music that already exists in the world. And Simon Hale put together these arrangements um, that really talk they really are the mood of what's going on in the piece. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it doesn't, in a, in a typical musical, when you've got music that kind of uh, furthers the plot, um, this is kind of the opposite. It doesn't necessarily further the plot, but it's right. almost like we go seamlessly into this gorgeous folk music that uh, talks about these like repressed feelings that we have. And that's like something that I feel like is really, um, si- it's like in the Great Depression when people kind of just push their feelings down. They had to sure, keep going, totally. um, yeah. you know, amid the terribleness that was going on around them. Um, so I really like to kind of explore that time period mm-hmm. and what those people were feeling and how it kind of is parallel in some ways to what we're going through now in the yeah. world. Sure. Um, so that's like been really interesting and it's very, um, it really fills the, artistic soul yeah, to be able I to kind imagine, of go yeah. through that um but it, in general the the cast is so different there are so many different types of people ages um everyone's come from somewhere else and mm-hmm. we all get along very well and i'm so excited to be with those people again um and That's on great. on kind of a sad note our stage manager Artie gaffin um, have passed away right. recently, and so I think that we are all really eager to be back together yeah. and to kind of do the show Work for him. That. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, for sure. Yeah. You, um, correct me if I'm wrong, you are from Cleveland. I you am. Are, what? What? Yes. I'm I'm completely unfamiliar <laughs> with good. the theater scene <laughs> sure. of Cleveland. Mm-hmm. Is it, it, it is it booming? Like how and how did you get involved in figuring out that theater and performing were something you were drawn to? Well, I think the biggest thing was that we have uh, Playhouse Square in downtown Cleveland. Right, of course. And so a lot of the big tours come through there. Um, and so I was really lucky as a kid to be able to go see some shows that I liked to, uh, that I was interested in, yeah. um, that my grandma would take me to, or my parents, or her friends. Um, and I think the first time that I ever really thought, oh, this could be something I could do, was uh, I was at... Um, Wicked and, you know, classic. Of course. And yep. um, loving it. Thought I was going to be Elphaba <laughs> right. someday, you know. We all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah, right. Exactly. No. Pipe dream. But um, <laughs> And I just remember uh, there was a dad uh, of a friend that I was with, and he just said, do you ever see yourself getting up there? Because I did the shows in high school, but sure, I right. never thought yeah. it was going to be anything more than something I did as a hobby. Mm-hmm. And that was the first, like, kind of spark 
in my head of like, oh, maybe I could do this. And right, then where it just first occurs to you. Completely. That you could, like, yeah, this like, is a thing. Oh, People do this, do this as a this. job, right. you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And so then uh, I went to school at Baldwin Wallace and right. I ended, I first started as a music therapy major because again, I was still like, oh my gosh, like I won't be able to make it in yeah. music theater. Um, so I was there and I would go to all the music theater uh, master classes and their shows because they were just amazing and I was so inspired and um, having that and having th places like the Beck Center which is also a place mm. in um, Lakewood Ohio uh, on the west side of Cleveland um, it was a professional theater and so there were people there who were equity ac equity actors who were yeah. working with people from BW and um, that was really cool to be like okay this is kind of okay this right, is professional. Right. Like people are getting paid to do this, and right. then these yeah. things are here. Yeah, yeah totally. Like, so then I kind of just ended up switching, and I had this just kind of hope that I would make it, right. and <laughs> just kept going. You know, like there wasn't yeah. any other option. It was like just go. You're gonna right. go to. Um, you know, New York and hope for the best. And yeah. here I am. That's amazing. And I so think, lucky. <laughs> and I think the very first time I met you was doing the, um, like the press day for the Bridges of Madison County tour. Oh my gosh. Right? And yeah. So that would have been, and so what, what was that? Because that had to have come not too long after moving here, right? For you. And like, yeah. what was that experience? And to spend all that time touring the country, doing this professional job must have been amazing. Oh my gosh. It came at the perfect time, I think, um, I loved touring, especially at the place that I was in in my life. It mm -hmm. was a, it was an easy, just kind of pick up go. I didn't yeah. have like strong, super strong roots here yet, right, and so it right. was really easy to just kind of go explore the country. Um, it was a short tour, so it was only nine months, so right. it was yep. really nice. I was able to kind of go and come back. Yeah, um, we spent six weeks in L.A. I had never been wow. to L.A., so wow. I got to explore that town <laughs> yeah. and everything. But it, it feels like a different lifetime now, I because, bet. especially because I was playing a 14-year-old, and um, which I thought like was my calling, was just to play these like <laughs> yeah, young right. characters. And like, hey, the, the Celia Keaton Bolger room. <laughs> exactly. Not no, that would be, you know. <laughs> yeah, she's shown up. Yeah. Exactly. So it was just a totally different world. Um, to come back from that and go to waitress and play someone who is my own age, mm -hmm. um, it was just, it was an amazing time, but I'm so glad that I did it early and yeah. that I was able to come back and move into something where I was in New York and able to like put roots down. Absolutely. That's yeah. fantastic. Let's open up to some questions yes. of people that are watching. <laughs> yes, what would they like Hello. to know from Caitlin? <laughs> yes. So Ken wants to know if you could name a pie after your experience with Waitress, what would it be called and what ingredients would it be? <laughs> Whoa, Ken. Tall order. <laughs> That's so much. Okay, let me think. So if I could have a pie, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, it would be, <laughs> it's so hard. It's really hard. It's so hard. I know. No, no that's is, okay, Ken. This is a really a, good question. It's, just, it's, it's, it's question. such deep emotions yes. we're dealing with. Yes, like, totally. Yeah. I think it would be like a sweet potato pie. Oh, so whatever is in a sweet yeah. potato pie. Yeah. I know that right. we've like when we have um, celebrations at the theater, usually someone will make sweet potato pie, and that was my first really? introduction to one. Oh. And you I, had never had a sweet potato pie. I wasn't pie really before. a pie person before the waitress. <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> but do you How like did pie you get now? through your audition? Honestly, <laughs> truly, <laughs> like that's crazy. No, that that's should amazing. be on the like application. How, are, like you, pie. are you um, are you a pie person now? Have you come to see? the other side with all of us i'm not really like a sweets person i'm more okay. of a salty Got it. Uh, all right. person okay. but um i will try any pie any pie that's put in front of any you now. Pie. all right there yeah. you go that's... but i don't know what the name of it would be it would have something to do with sweet 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 I don't know. That's, I'm sorry, know, it's, it's, a work, it's a work in it's progress. It's a work in progress. But it would be a sweet potato. Yeah, yeah. 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 We'll check okay, back I'll in keep later. thinking. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. So um, Kat wants to know that after, you know, going on and off of being, playing Dawn for three years, what has that character taught you the most? What has mm, playing Dawn taught you? That's a great question. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. That's a great question, Kat. Um, I think the biggest thing that as the character and as the actress playing the character is to breathe 
and know that it's all going to work out. Mm -hmm. Someone said something the other day that it was like, um, in the end, everything's going to be okay. And if it's not okay, then it's not the end. And I feel like that's like something that I'm trying to live by and also Dawn Mm -hmm. tries to live by, Yeah, you know? And I think her nerves get the best of her sometimes, which mine do as well. So, um, yeah. Yeah, was it... what, What... what was it like for you to like to play that character of Dawn, of Dawn and step away for a little while? And when you reapproached each time, where they're new, um, had you been thinking, you know, oh, if I get to play Dawn again, I want to like, you know, fit this in or try this? Do do you do any of that kind of thinking? Yes, one hundred percent. I think, um, especially the when I left to do Girl from the North Country and then I came back, mm-hmm. um, I that was one of the most exciting things was to revisit it, especially after having done it for you know, a year and a half or so, yeah. you kind of, you're on autopilot a lot of the times sure, and you're just right. doing the same things that you've been doing the whole way Hitting through. Your marks Completely. And, yeah, right. and so going back in, um, especially at the time I was going back in with Noah Galvin, which was going to be very different than right. Chris, Chris Fitzgerald. Sure, and so yeah. um, he, doing it with Noah brought out different things in my character as well. Um, and so I was able to kind of bounce off that energy. Oops, You're sorry. Okay. And, and bounce <laughs> off the mic. And um, yeah, How I, I yeah, that's, definitely. That's really I, cool. You like reapproach it and it's, yeah, it's that, very cool. That's great. Mm-hmm. Amazing. I think we have time for one more. Yes, we yeah. can do one last question. Great. Okay, Mary wants to know, what are you going into the final weeks of waitress on Broadway with like how are you approaching if anything's particular in mind like how how does it feel going the final weeks on Broadway? You should try oh that gosh. last note thing again. Oh <laughs> my gosh, I should try. <laughs> give it, give it one more go. Oh no, yeah, just... one more breath in the middle of the note, you know, just to prove I could do it. No, um, I mean, I think uh, the thing that I thought that is really unexpected because I thought, okay, it's coming to a close. I've been with it a long time. All good things must end. Mm-hmm. I'm going on to another. show it's going to be okay. I thought that I would be relatively uh, unemotional about it. And um, during soft place the other day, like a, a, just my throat closed mm. because I just was so um, moved with emotion by thinking about how I'm not going to ever ha- be able to do this again. Oh, that's getting me. Oh, I know. <laughs> and especially, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm making hearing, him cry on his no, birthday. Just, like, hearing that. No, yeah, like that. It, it was, very true. especially during um, Soft Place. And I think uh, my kind of hope over the next five weeks is that um, I just really want to fully enjoy it and never go in going, okay, just got to get through the show. Yeah. You know, I really want to enjoy what I'm doing because... I know that I'm going to look back on this time and be very so happy that it happened, but sad that I'll never be able to do it again. That's beautiful. That's so well put. Yes, no no further endorsements needed here, (laughs) by the way. Go see, if you haven't yet, go see Waitress at Broadway's Brooks Atkinson Theater. You have until January 5th of 2020 to do so. There is an all-star team over there in that cast right now, so it uh, it is well worth your time and attention. Uh, Caitlin, thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you so for much, completing Ryan. my I'm waitress so journey I'm on so my glad birthday. I could be the last. Such a pleasure having you. Please come <laughs> back you. and see us anytime you'd like. Oh, I will. Um, thanks so much, Caitlin. Would you please take us out? Gladly. Yes, thank you guys so much for tuning in. We are live at five every single weekday here on Facebook. You can listen to us wherever you get your podcast by searching for hashtag live at five and hitting that subscribe button. Be sure to tune in tomorrow. We talk to Tony Winner, Michael Cerveris, all about his upcoming. Concert at Joe's Pub.